do, Dream Team. Y'all know I'm excited because here we are with another reaction to the Ricky Gervais Show Season 2, Episode 2. Before we dive into this, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Ring notification bell, get a video a thumbs up. Ricky, Steve, Carl, take it away. For the past few years, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant, and Carl Pilkington have been meeting regularly for a series of pointless conversations. This is one of them. Testing, is that all right? <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Now, Carl, I know you're fascinated by the concept of the doppelganger, of seeing someone who looks exactly like you. Yeah. Jake has emailed in. He says, Carl, if you could spend a day with an exact replica of you, Ooh. okay, so somehow they've cloned you, Carl, and they've got, you've got him for one day, what would you do with this? Oh. What, would you, what would you make him do? What, would you, uh, what conversation would you have with him? What would you do? Is there anything you could, you know, how would you utilise him for one day? Well, they'd both say, I'm not bothered, and that would be the end of conversation. <laughs> <laughs> what would do me head in is... Does he, does he think the same way, look the same way, exactly dresses? Exactly the same. Yeah. How would I know which one I was? <laughs> <laughs> because you'd be you. That's amazing. No, no, no. How would I know That's which one I was? That's incredible. No, because... That is the most stupid thing <laughs> ever said by a human being. Can we get the Guinness Book of Records on this? It has anyone, anywhere in the world, said anything more stupid than how would I know which one was me? But think about it, this other person's going, all right, thanks um. for... Uh, Meeting up and that, and I go, hang on a minute. No, you you came to me, and then Suzanne would come home and she wouldn't know the difference, and then suddenly you start doubting yourself, and you go, should I be leaving? Or so how do I know if I am that real one if he knows what I know? Oh my god! But you know who you are because you're yeah, but, experiencing it. But he'd it. be saying that because he'd say, yeah, it's a bit weird. But isn't you it? know the truth, you, know? you idiot. How would I know which one I was? So anyway, but bear in mind, you what could would pass, you do? You could pass him off as yourself. What would you do? I can understand what Carl is saying. I can, but I, it, it, I still agree with Ricky and Steve. Like you know who you are. You know that you're Carl. But I can understand Carl saying, "Well, if he's thinking the same thing, we're both thinking that we're the real person." You, you start to doubt yourself. Would you play tricks? Would you, uh, you know? You could what? be in two places at once. Would you do stings? Would you do scams? No, because it would only end up getting me into trouble, wouldn't it? Because people won't believe that there's another one like me. Mm. Otherwise, everyone would be saying that when they get caught robbing. They go, oh, it wasn't me, it was me doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs> it can only... I wouldn't True. want it, to be honest. It's a, it, Again, it's a bit of a headache, isn't it? Because he could be going off going mental, causing all sorts of trouble, and you're going, will you pack it in? <laughs> and he's going, what? What are you on about? <laughs> But then that wouldn't happen, would it? Because he's being me, so he'd be sat wherever I am anyway. Because he'd want to do what I want to do. So, pointless. But I still wouldn't want it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. That was a conversation with himself. That yeah. was amazing. That was, we, like, that was like experiencing what it would be like if there was two cars. Yeah, he was we, a discussion with we could have left in yeah. that time and come back, and he'd be <laughs> arguing still. Does this mean... Does this mean... <laughs> oh does this mean, God. though, that I could just sit at home and not do anything, and just send me out on yes. And any any when he when he's seen something happen, I'm seeing it. No, 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 no. no. You're separate people. You're separate people. But then yeah. he's not a doppelganger. Then, well, is he? you're identical twins. Then you found out identical twins, and he's got the, exactly the same input as you. I mean, it's not a real question, is it? It's just a little again. But I said to you the other week about twins and that. How it's, I, I wouldn't like to have a twin. It's a it's all right when you're a kid, but unless you're a Siamese twin. Even they don't even look alike, do they? Just stuck together. You don't go, oh, don't they look like each other? They have different haircuts. They don't. They don't carry that thing on, do they? That like normal twins do. Like normal twins, the mums say have the same haircut, wear the same shirt. Siamese twins never look the same. They've just got their ass stuck together. Again, it's a dialogue in his own head. It's unbelievable. I love Carl Pilkey. Okay, Carl. So much. This is a. a a logical conundrum um, to a certain extent. There's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, 
The pressure here isn't to get this right. The pressure is when I've told you the answer to then understand it. Because I've still, when I've explained this to people, I've laid out for them, they still can't quite get the concept. Um, okay, so there's two doors, Carl. Yeah. One leads to heaven, right. one leads to hell. Yeah. Okay, they're identical. You can't tell them apart. Okay, 50 50. Right. Obviously, you want to go to heaven, I assume. Right, yeah. there's two guards, identical guards, guarding each door. Okay. Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. Oh. You have to ask one question to find out which Ooh. which is which, and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? I've only got one. Yeah. That's I'm tough. That's a really tough scenario to be in, because I was going to say you just asked the one guarding heaven, which, hey, are you... Is that the right door? But you don't know which one's guarding which because they're identical. They're identical doors. And one always lies and one always tells the truth. That's a very tough scenario. Y'all talk to me in the comment section. What would be your question? Because I'm trying to think of a question. I can't. I can't think of one. What would be your question to make sure you got into heaven? What? One to, to both? No. One to either of them. You don't know which one's which though. So what question do you ask? Why can't I ask, like, both of them one? Because it's Because not the, the rules. rules are you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's the, this a leap of imagination here. And I've, I've, I've definitely got to answer... I've got to ask them a question. I can't just sort of have a feel of the door to see <laughs> if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> They're identical. You stand a few yards away. You cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which. What question do you ask? I can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's no <laughs> keyhole near them. Um, Let's imagine there's a small rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. So, they stood there. Yeah. They both look the same. They're both smiling. Yeah. But one of them's not really smiling really he's trying to make me make a mistake isn't he well he's just gonna lie when you ask him a question if you ask him so what's the point in asking a question do i know one of them's gonna lie yeah but would they be neighbors like this would they be that close <laughs> <laughs> Why? <have> <laughs> <sighs> I mean, it's we're not tough. sure if these two guys get on it's a logical well, i'll tell you the answer no no, no i want to see if he can get it he's almost there uh no, he's not almost there. What am I thinking? So, no, hang on. Right, so you go up and yeah. you go. Um, you right, go... hang on. Well, look, let's let's imagine that. Let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys, okay? Right. But we have to. Um, uh, uh, well, well, me and me and Steve will decide which doors we're guarding, okay? Right. Uh, I'm. Uh, look away, Carl. Okay. Right. Then. So we've decided, okay? One of us is guarding hell, and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question are you going to ask, and who are you going to ask it to? Right, um, I'll just say to you, Steve, I'll go, uh, uh, got some, uh, got some post for God here. <laughs> that's not a question. That's a statement. Right, you've got some post for God here. No, that's not a question. Yeah, but maybe a right. question's coming. I got, you got some post for God here, yeah? Uh, and it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a, a question, still not a question. No, let so him finish it, me. Is, is God in, because I need him to sign for this post. Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well if you want. Go on. He's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want to, do you want to get him? Just, uh... Well, you've only got one question. <laughs> so, you're, you're asking Steve, is God in? What's the answer? Yes. You ask me. Yes. Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. <laughs> um, what am I going to do with this? Well, give it to me and I'll give it to God, because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, give it to me and I'll take it into God, because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. Uh, let me tell you the answer. Please. I'm guarding hell, by the way. I'm the devil, Steve's God, okay? So, you ask me what what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding, and I'm gonna lie. I know he'd say heaven, because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say, he'd say hell. So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Steve, what door are you, are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know. No, that doesn't work. Because you asked me the same and I'd say heaven as well. Right, so who do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling though, isn't it? This is what <laughs> life's... 
Well, as opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's yeah. just used. I just think, because there's a lot of questions in life where you don't know the answer and you go, do you know what? I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so... They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> <laughs> I, maybe I wasn't paying close enough attention. So what did Ricky say was the question? You asked one of them which door they're guarding? Hey, which door are you guarding? Heaven. Uh, but the other one's going to lie and say that they're guarding heaven, right? I don't know. I <laughs> uh, I think Ricky just solved it, but y'all hit me in the comment section. I don't. We're going back. We're going back. I'm sorry because I still don't think I paid close enough attention. And then we're going to skip back to this part. To God, because he's been idol. You're an idiot. But let me tell you the answer. I'm guarding hell, by the way. I'm the devil. Sorry. Steve's God. Okay. So you asked me what what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding. And I'm going to lie. I know he'd say heaven, because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say oh. he'd say hell. So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Oh, so if he asked... And whatever the person's... Other, whatever, so if he asked Steve what door the other person is guarding... Steve would say, hell. And if he asked Ricky, what door the other person, what door is the other person guarding? Ricky would say, hell. Am I still confusing myself? So if he asked Steve, Steve, what door is the other person guarding? Hell. Both would say hell, right? One more time. One more time because my brain's not clicking. It's not working. Heaven, because he'd tell the truth. But I'm lying, so I'd say he'd say hell. So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding. If I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding. What would he say? What would he say? If I was to ask the other one what door he's guarding, what would he say? So if I looked at Steve, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? I get it. I get it. Wait. If I asked the devil, if I was to ask the other one what door, what door is he guarding, what would he say? The devil would say, he'd say, hey, yo. you, you only get to ask one of them this question. It's still a conundrum in my head. I'm, no, I, I'm still not 100%. I just may be stupid. I think I'm just dumb. I think that's the case. We're going to move on because I'm, I'm just dumb. And I can't figure this out. Oh, chimpanzee, that is written it down. Uh, that's the jingle there for Carl's Diary. Uh, here we are. Spoke to Ricky and his friend Glenn about art. I just don't get it. Ricky had some odd pictures on his walls. I don't have any pictures up in my flat because of the mirrored wall. <laughs> but I can't say I'm bothered. The mirrored wall, we should just explain what that is. When you moved into your flat, there was an enormous mirror on one wall, was that right? We just got this flat, and, uh, you know, it's not a big flat, so I think the people who had it before us, he was a gay fella, right? Which was a bit like, oh, what have you been doing with that mirror and that? <coughs> but that, that, <laughs> what? No, just, you know. Just, what? What? Well, what has he been doing with the mirror? Well, what's he been doing? Why, 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 no, what? it's just because they're quite sort of experimental in it, aren't they? And I don't know. What do you mean? What do they do? Well, I wouldn't know anything about it, but go on. No, what do you want? What? No, I don't. Experimental what do you mean? in what way? What do you mean experimental? I just mean, you know, they'd be doing stuff. What? what? Of whatever they do. Chemistry. What? They have a chemistry set out. They'd be doing experiments. What? No, just doing what? Singing I am what I am and just checking out their, no, each their dance moves. I'm not having a go at anyone, but what? I'm just saying, like, they're doing what they're doing. Uh, which Carl, you're not as well. You're not. I'm not. This is what. Why? 
Why are you worried about what a little gay fella was doing in your flat before you got it in the front of a mirror? I wasn't worried about it. Why I mean, are you thinking about what he's doing? Why are you fantasising what a little gay fella was doing in front of your mirror in your... I'm, I'm, I'm not bothered. I'm just telling you what, why it was a bit odd that he had a mirror in there, right? Yeah. But forget the, the history. Yeah. But you've got a mirror in there now, haven't you? No, because what I did was, I tried, I was going to take it down. And I thought, oh, it's a bit dangerous. This, yeah. You know, it could crack and... Because it's the size of the whole wall, isn't it? It, it, it took up a whole wall. Right. right? So, like, when he's moving about everywhere, he's got a good view of it and that. But... He's got this full wall of mirror, and I thought, I can't take that down. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I thought, what, what can I do? So I've just put wallpaper on it. Brilliant. And um, it looks all right, you, you wouldn't know, what have you. But it means that I can't put any pictures up. That's, that's, all, that's all I'm saying. Because I've put a nail in it. And what don't you understand about art? What about art don't you understand? The concept? Specifics? No, so I, I, that's, that's like when we, when we were in London having a shop around at Christmas and there was that picture of fruit for 700 quid. It's like, well, just get some fruit, you know what I mean? You can get some real fruit for Yeah. I understand that, but don't invent cameras then, one or the other. Do you know what I mean? That's what annoys me. Someone invents something and then they go, we've got to invent something else. Like the abstract thing, why has someone gone, oh, I can't have paintings anymore because... What is it, a dali? Going, mounting clocks and stuff. No. I mean, the first one was all right when he did the first clock, but then all the time he's just like, oh, I'll draw something and it's got a melting clock on it. No. I'll do a sheep, put, put one of them on it. Put, Have you seen his lobster telephone? That annoys me. Why? Because he, I think what annoyed me more with that is when he heard about how it happened, um, he had some artist mate round, yeah. right? And um, I don't know what happened. Uh, they, oh, were okay. they were eating. That's a hell of an anecdote. No, no, but they were eating. They were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters? And, uh, yeah. They were eating lobster, oh, right. and uh, that's Andy. I don't know the other artist, whoever it was, sort Telephone. of phone. started saying, "Oh, you and your clocks and all that." Right? Brilliant. And, um, this started, didn't happen. They yeah. started arguing, yeah. and he chucked some of the lobster bollocks, and it landed it on the phone. Bounced off his mate's head, <laughs> went on the phone, and they both looked at each other <laughs> like, "Are you thinking what I'm thinking?" And they, they they brought out that phone as a bit of art. <laughs> Things like that oh annoy my me. God. Because it was then just messing about. That didn't happen. Just telling you what I know. I saw his, his work. Each to their own, if that's what he's doing. I'm just saying, I'm not putting my stamp of approval on it. Art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. Well, Suzanne would like some art. Just like, uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing, otherwise she's got to talk to me <laughs> about stuff. There's no art, there's no point. Just wallpaper. I'm just saying, we've got three three windows we can look out of. Right. Right? Stop looking at the walls, look out the window. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. My <laughs> mum phone said that my Auntie Nora, ah, oh, classic Auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago, she was asking me, Dad, how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because <laughs> she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of her. What does she want to do? Start a football team? <laughs> what does she want to back garden astroturf? She likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. But. Went round to Ricky's and had some chicken curry that Ricky's girlfriend Jane had made. Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was okay while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them on first class. <laughs> Blimey, getting a bit vitriolic in the uh, why diary. Doesn't he, uh, why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and I, I love the cat? Why, why, it's why just everything in that house that you've got gets sort of special treatment and it's a cat. And it what do you mean you get me? special treatment? <clears throat> You, sometimes we put I, food down for it, and yeah. sometimes it gets uh, uh, on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what, just stroke it. We're you not massage it. it. You massage its back. You go, oh, you stressed out. Well, no, no it's out. good. It's, no, no, I'm not saying you stressed out. <laughs> At no point did I say you stressed, you stressed out. out. You said, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something? <laughs> I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe because it! Because every this. time I go around there, it comes straight from the goodies. <laughs> Ooh, it's it's like the lizard thing you've got. It's kind of, it's just sat there, you've bought it a big box, right, to be in. Right, I mean, one is one. a salamander, right. so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box, it's a big vivarium. Yeah, but what I'm saying and is... As it, and, and, and if you're going to criticise someone for just sitting there, having a round head and doing nothing with its life, uh, people who live in glass houses, no, we've done this one. Do you, know, do you know what gets me though, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it, and I thought, is it dead? Right, because he's just sat there. Like, and then it was thinking exactly the same <laughs> fucking thing. sat there, not moving, right? And then on the top of the box, is like a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's... it. 
it's, it's, it's food, yeah. right? But they were more active than the thing that it was going to feed. <laughs> Get rid of the lizards and keep them in there. More entertaining. Don't understand it. <laughs> the crickets are more active than the thing it was going to feed. Get rid of the lizard. Keep the crickets. Put them in there. More entertaining. <laughs> Nobody would, Carl doesn't want to watch a lizard just stay still the whole time. He said that, that's not entertaining at all. A few months back, a girl who was having a kid showed me one of them scans of the kid that was in her. That's science gone mad, isn't it? I couldn't think of anything nice to say as it looked like a frog. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why we've got to that point? What? Why, why have we got to see something that, that young? Why... Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some, surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's just an added bonus for people who are interested in such things. That's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? No, no but what, what I mean is, why... At what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of x-raying the fella's testicles and saying, well, there it is at a really young age? <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where are we going to stop? It's, because, it's just horses for courses, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They That's like right. to show their baby. They're yeah, they excited sit, about it. They All sit right, down yeah. and they, they show the friends the, the slideshow. There That's the birth. Yeah. Oh, that's the conception. Oh, look, Ron's going a bit mad there, isn't he? But why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying. It was an awkward situation because she was happy with it. I was like, oh, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was an odd-looking thing. I couldn't say, oh, it looks like you, because that <laughs> would be a diss. <laughs> Say, oh, it looks like you, because that would be a diss. <laughs> I feel what you say, Carl. <laughs> I feel what well, you're, you're not the only one who's been away. I know you've been off working, yeah. but I, at long last, have taken a bit of leisure time. Go on. And uh, <laughs> you've probably heard of the Rio de Janeiro Carnival, only one of the uh, the hottest uh, you know events in the world oh, calendar. Yeah. <laughs> imagine me down there. Oh, Rio! God. You can imagine. Did not know oh, what hit it. Oh God! Oh my! Imagine. Were you like uh, Paul the Party Animal Park? He would not have been able to keep up views with me. God! What did you do? Oh. What did you get up to? Well, let me tell you right now. Um, Day one, I almost drowned. Day two, I got a foot infection and spent the day in the oh. hospital. And the rest of the time, I had diarrhoea. <laughs> so that's uh, that's the, that was a hell of a that was a hell of a time. Carnival. Yeah, yeah. I did. Uh, I was able to watch some of the carnival on TV, oh, and right. it looked brilliant. It looked did amazing. It? Um, I didn't actually. I, it was difficult to make out because the TV wasn't actually in my room. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because in an effort to save money, I wasn't staying in a hotel. I was staying with a bunch of other people in some kind of, like, someone's flat that they'd let out. And uh, so oh I had to look, my. I had to watch the TV, was, like, from my window, watching a neighbour's TV. And, of course, when they changed the channel, you know, often during the juicy bits, I couldn't see anything. And, um, so, but they looked really good. I'm bunged up at the moment just so I can get through the show. But I've just been on a 12-hour flight, and it is terrifying oh. being on a flight when you know that any moment you could go. Because, you know, the problem is sometimes the toilet's free and sometimes in, you've got to queue up. And the worst oh. bit is that that sort of half an hour just before you land, when they say the toilets are out of bounds now, <laughs> I'd say I went twice before that in quick succession. The woman sat next to the toilet. She was she didn't know what was going on, the noises and stuff in there. And I was because I was really oh. panicky. Oh Christ! And um, and so of course then on the whole flight uh, as we're landing, I'm just I'm really petrified because I'm thinking this could. I, mean, I packed a pair of underpants and jeans in the in the bag in the hold all just in case it all went. Oh and I was no. really, because I hate flying anyway, and I hate landing because it's the most terrifying moment of the journey. Then it really was rumbling, and I was thinking, I've got to get out of here. Ooh. Of course, you know you know when you're in a hurry, everything, suddenly everything makes you angry. Yeah. The old lady in front of me who's just hobbling along off the... Oh my God, oh my, bro, he is speaking to me right now because it is legit so frustrating. It seems like everybody wants to take their sweet time especially on a plane when you're in a hurry and you're behind people and that one person that's in front of you wants to let everybody go before you oh my god oh i'm getting frustrated thinking about it let's let's keep it going gangplank yeah. 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 you know just really with your with your with your bad hips and yeah your bad and legs. your zimmer frame i know you've been through a war but get out of my way <laughs> yeah. and just anyone who kind of even passes you're oh, you just oh. and uh, so I, yeah, I managed to get there just in time got into the time and it all went off Man alive, it was, it was grim. 
But th- that was that was not anything compared with the first couple of days. Because the first day, I was, I went for a walk. Ibadan Beach is famous for just the beautiful, beautiful people that gather there. There's so many beautiful women in Rio. It made me angry. I was angry that these women were so attractive and that you know none of them were even looking at me. So, but anyway, I'm on the beach because I I was shopping and I needed a wee. Right, and we went for a quick impromptu swim, and I thought, oh, are we in the in Just the sea? Just think of him on this beach, right? We're dire here. Well, I'm wearing oh great big God. long shorts, because I'm not going to try and compete with these boys, because they And are... you are, could I say this, the whitest man uh, yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah. I mean, with his shirt off, you can see his heart like a newborn fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this is the thing. As I went into the sea to have a wee, oh, there was a discussion about this. As I went into the sea to have a wee? <laughs> in a well, little dry. See, there was a discussion about this, because I'm very much of the opinion that you should take your trunks down and some people, uh, some of my friends are saying, just do it in your trunks and let's see the sea just wash it away. What a hell of a carnival. Well, and I think that's, I'm against that. I've always been against that. Against that in swimming pools, everything, you know. So I, so I. No, to... I'm against pissing in swimming pools, full yes. stop. It doesn't matter whether you do get in, take your trunks down or let's. Don't... Agreed. Agreed, Carl. I'm against peeing. I'm not peeing in a pool, in the ocean. If, I, well, I guess if you, I guess on the beach or ocean, there's just no toilets in sight. You gotta do what you gotta do. But swim, do not pee in a pool. Don't pee in a. It's disgusting. It's nasty. Don't don't do it. Just don't. And fish well, what in the sea? Pool. Yeah, well, fine. Yeah, fine, okay. Right, fish, so, fish do it. So, so anyway, so I'm in the sea trying to trying to urinate, and I so I kneeled because I'm obviously very tall, so it's tricky to get deep enough for the water to to mask what you're up to. So I tried to kneel down in the water, right, and, and I got the I got John Thomas out, but then the water swept out again and just left me on the oh. beach. <laughs> So, but luckily, my, my back was to it, everyone's no one saw. So, um, so I, so I, I, I can't think of a funnier sight than Steve Merchant on his knees with his little John Thomas out. I don't know how big it is, I've never seen it. But with me, I imagine it's in proportion to the rest of his. I no? wish. Um, this, all I'll say is I've been a little short changed. But, um, so, I, so then I got up and I waded a bit deeper in, right? And uh, now I was sort of, I was, I was trying, I got it out. But what I didn't realise is that the waves just off the beach are really just uncontrollable. You never know what's going to happen. So suddenly, I see this giant wave coming towards me, crashing towards me, and I got the yeah. cock out and everything, and it grabs this wave, comes over me, and lifts me up, flips me up in the water, right? And I'm floundering around, I can't see anything, because of course I had to take my glasses off <laughs> just to go in the sea. Because oh I, no. I didn't want to lose them. Oh, God. So, oh so, my. I, so I'm floundering around, and I'm wa- genuinely getting scared, because I, as I try to get into shore, the wave just pulls me back again. So I'm waving to my friends on the beach. But what With I everything. Well, what I don't realise is that because I'm, wearing my, because I'm not wearing my glasses, I don't realise that I've been dragged along the beach some way, and I'm not actually waving <laughs> to my friends. So there's, like, a bunch of these beautiful women on Ipanema Beach watching a pasty white man waving with his cock out. And, and what annoyed me was my friends were laughing. And that really, Steve, really angered if me. I'd have been there, I would have burst. But why would yeah. you have come running? Would you have come? I would have died laughing, dog. I would have absolutely died laughing. Absolutely, without a doubt. Running in to help me. Oh, I couldn't have saved you with your glasses off in your knob out. When, if I if I ever save you, I want you to be fully dressed with your glasses on. So you'd have just let me go. You'd have, that would have been what you'd said to my parents. <laughs> he had his knob out and his glasses off. There was no way I was going to. I can't it. think of a funnier sight. Oh. Oh my god, yeah, that would have been absolutely purely hilarious. Steve, keep your trunks on next time. If you're gonna do it, just keep your trunks on. That's all we have. Uh, if you guys enjoyed that video, make sure you also check out this one. Subscribe, ring notification bell. It's your boy D. Neil. Out.